Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Let's turn to the EU referendum now, and a new poll tonight suggests that the Leave campaign has established a four-point lead, but there are some suggestions that the findings could have been affected by the bank holiday weekend. The campaign itself has been dominated by a claim from the Leave camp that VAT could be cut or even scrapped on energy and other bills if Britain votes out. Remain supporters branded the claims fantasy economics. Here's our political editor, Gary Gibbon. Brits will save £2 billion a year off their energy bills, The Sun says. Inside, the paper has an article written by Boris Johnson and Michael Gove, plus Labour's Gisela Stewart, saying fuel bills will be lower for everyone if we leave. Give the British people a bonus for voting to leave uh, by cutting their fuel bills. Um, that is, of course, only a small part of the money we would save from our annual contribution, uh, money that should also be spent on other priorities like the National Health Service. Well, this is fantasy economics from the Leave campaign. The fact is that nine out of ten economists have told us that our economy would shrink if we left the EU. And if our economy shrinks, there's going to be less money. There's going to be cuts. There's going to be higher taxes. So once more, the Leave campaign are spending money they simply don't have. In recent days, the Vote Leave campaign's leading Tories have accused David Cameron of a deceitful immigration pledge that corrodes public trust, of cozying up to big corporations who want to pay lower wages to immigrant workers, and of massively underfunding an NHS that is in crisis. To hammer home the point, a recent Vote Leave video shows an older patient stuck in a queue behind EU migrants waiting for NHS treatment. But if Britain leaves the EU, skipping straight in to see a smiling consultant. The Vote Leave attack lines are beginning to look to some like one wing of the Tory party setting itself up as some kind of rival government in waiting, with its own agenda. Pro the little guy against big corporations. In contrast, it's implied, to the actual government, in which some of the senior figures in Vote Leave still hold pretty important ministerial jobs. <laughs> Nigel Farage campaigning in Birmingham. Get him out, he says, get him out. The official Leave campaign thinks opinion may have shifted a bit their way as we get into the last weeks of the campaign and the government isn't allowed to use the Whitehall machine anymore. Yeah, why are you racist against the British? The debate in Northampton got so lively, police decided to reroute Nigel Farage's battle bus away from the town. We oh, my daughter put a game to her school that she needed and talk about waiting times and a doctor's surgery. Two weeks! A little earlier, I caught up with one of the senior vote leave figures, Michael Gove, the Justice Secretary. And I started by asking him for clarification about who exactly was in a position to determine policy. Who was running the country? Just, just help me here. David Cameron is still Prime Minister, isn't he? And George Osborne is Chancellor. Yes, absolutely. And I, just, this Cameron... article would suggest that uh, there's a government in waiting that has an alternative manifesto. Fuel bills will be lower for everyone. Yes, if we leave the European Union, we can remove VAT on fuel bills that people currently pay, and that will be that, a 60 That, that would require bonus. the agreement of David Cameron and George Osborne. Well, of course, it would require the agreement of people across government. But so if what we do you promise? Leave... You're not pro yeah, that's not a promise at all. Well, it says we will, fuel bills will be lower for everyone. Yes, they will if you leave the European Union, because we will have the power, which we don't they have. They don't necessarily, because David Cameron is Prime Minister and George Osborne is Chancellor, and they've shown no interest in doing this. Well, I think that things will change after June the 23rd, uh -huh. when we vote to leave, because once we've voted to leave, a clear signal will have been sent. And the one of the key elements in our campaign is to say that people in this country should control things like VAT. And if we vote to leave, then VAT levels can be reduced to zero. The personnel might change if we come out of Europe. No, this campaign, this Leave campaign, is a way of saying to working people across the country, you can take back control of this country and you can send instructions to the government about what you think we should do with your money. A lot of people in Number 10, have you got any comfort for people in Number 10 who think your campaign has now moved to trying to destabilise and diminish David Cameron? Writing letters saying he's corrosive of public trust, he's in cahoots with wage-starving big capital. It's got absolutely nothing to do with the Prime Minister and absolutely everything to do with the European Union. I've made it clear that I think so he's that a the prisoner Prime Minister... Of that. He's a helpless prisoner, is he? 
I am really clear that I think that the Prime Minister should stay as Prime Minister until the next general election. But this whole referendum debate is not about who should be in number 10, it's about which direction our country should go in. And I believe that our country would be stronger, more democratic, freer, and better off outside the European Union. And others respectfully disagree with me, that's fair enough. But one thing is undeniable. If you look at those people who are funding the Remain campaign, then they were representatives of the big banks and the multinational companies the that do who very funded you in the last general election. Thank you. The people who funded out of you in the, the last European general election. Union. They're the people who funded the Conservative Party. Exactly the same ones. You didn't. You weren't squeamish then. Uh, if you wanted to look back at what I said during the course of the last general election campaign, you will see that I spoke out against the undeserving rich. I said that the whole point of the Conservatives being in government is that we should be on the side of the working poor. Now we're in the Perda period and the white on machine can't wade in the way it has done. Do you feel there's going to be a more level playing field? I do think it is a help now that we are in a period where the playing field, I hope, is level, but we need to be vigilant to make sure that everyone plays by the rules. Oh, you're not completely convinced that David Cameron and George Osborne play by the rules? That's, that's added to the list of insults now. No, we just need to be vigilant. Michael Gove and Gary Gibbon. Leading figures in the campaign for Britain to leave the European Union say they want to be able to scrap VAT on energy bills to help the poorest households, as EU rules currently prevent such a move. But those wishing to remain in the EU have accused the Leave group of fantasy land economics. Here's our deputy political editor, John Pino. What are all of you together? Take them all in. You were refugee once. Your family were refugee once. Getting heated this referendum, not always like today, they were waiting for Nigel Farage to show up. But reaching vital working class voters, that's the aim of the Leave side now. And for the many who aren't too excited yet, what about a promise to axe VAT on fuel bills at home? Could Britain afford it? We're so much in the red. Yes, we can, say the Leave campaign. At the moment, inside the EU, you can't vary VAT. And that means there is an unfair tax burden on the very poorest. I believe that if we leave the European Union, we should remove VAT on domestic fuel, and that would save households £60 a year. The in campaign's treating it all as a bit of a joke, like the gate crasher in a gorilla suit at the Leave rally the other day. They've tallied up anything resembling a spending promise and come up with an eye-watering £111 billion. But which look more dodgy to you, the costings or the promises? The Stronger in Europe campaign say the Leavers are promising £150 million extra on better railways, though no one's mentioned that figure. They say tax cuts promised by the Leave side would cost nearly £8 billion if they took 2p off the basic tax rate, but there's been no specific pledge to do that. What we've heard over the last few weeks, uh, people that want to leave suggesting that they would spend money on this and that, and it does add up to billions and billions of pounds of commitments. And, but as we've seen, with economists almost all in consensus that the economy would be hit, we'd have less revenue, I think the, you know, the Leave campaign do need to explain where this magic money is going to come from. Take all the Leavers' ideas as promises and they're spending the same money over and over again. The claims and counterclaims are getting more aggressive, condemned as misleading or worse, outright lies. The economic claims from the Remainers made the early running. Now we'll see whether the tough warnings on migration and the promises of lower household bills outside the EU put the Leavers back in front. Not that they've been holding back so far. Remember the Leavers' warnings of millions of new migrants overwhelming A&E departments? About 8% on the population, nearly 60% more people turning up for treatment. Really? Or the Remainers claim every household would lose over £4,000 outside the EU. But that figure's debatable and was based on a loss to the whole economy. Not the same thing. Oh, the victim. So oh, the, the victim. Immigrant. The debate's not as spiky as this everywhere, but that's one reason it's so bitter. Nigel Farage and the Leavers need to fire up and get out their vote. Remain campaigners can't fall back. It'll get tougher. There are still 23 days to go. John Pinar, BBC News. Energy bills could be slashed if Britain exits the EU. That's what Leave campaigners claim today. Michael Gove said EU rules prevent energy tax cuts, that it hurts poorest households the most. But the Remain campaign called the figures a fantasy. Our political correspondent Carl Dinner reports on the latest numbers row. Vote Leave claim that if Britain leaves the EU, we can scrap their rules on VAT on energy bills, saving the average household £60 a year. 
that if we vote to leave, we can reduce VAT on fuel to zero. That's a £60 bonus for every household. And more than that, we get control of millions of pounds that we currently hand over to the European Union that we can use to spend on our priorities. But some energy companies have said the EU keeps energy prices down and the energy secretary says taxes won't be cut if we leave. Well, this is fantasy economics from the Leave campaign. The fact is that nine out of ten economists have told us that our economy would shrink if we left the EU. And if our economy shrinks, there's going to be less money, there's going to be cuts, there's going to be higher taxes. In fact, Remain accused Vote Leave of making billions of pounds worth of unfunded promises, such as the 50 million pounds a day for the NHS suggested by the side of their bus. So, where would the money for the VAT cut come from? That is, of course, only a small part of the money we would save from our annual contribution, uh, money that should also be spent on other priorities like the National Health Service. But you wouldn't be able to spend all of it on the NHS, then, as, as your battle bus suggests. We've never said every penny should be, and indeed it's not a matter for vote leave. Vote leave is not the government. Indeed, not being the government is another reason why vote leave's critics say their energy tax cut won't happen, even if Britain does vote to leave. Carl Dinan, ITV News, Westminster. I've been getting away with it.